This DJ and TV show is sponsored by DJ Event Planner, Electra Voice, DJ Trivia and DJ Bingo, ProX Direct, Odyssey Cases. Perfect Portals Instant DJ Requests And our DJ and TV Insiders This is John Young from DJ and TV. Thanks for watching. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to another Monday night. Thank you so very much for taking time out of your evening to join us. I uh, very much appreciate that. Uh, in case you didn't notice, like we brought John and we changed Cubby. I, I don't know exactly what happened. He he grew a beard and and he's not wearing the hat. And there's no dog in the background. And apparently he switched teams from you know the Cubs to the Phillies. But he's with us. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. That's Matt. So anyway... <laughs> Uh, we are very, very happy to have Mr. Matt Campbell along with us tonight. Now, I got a question because I, I should have clarified. Is it Campbell or is it Campbell? Campbell. Campbell. Okay. I found out like in my, in my area, there's you could go either way. Either way, so yep. If you ever okay. run into that. Hmm. You know, I have a not. Couple, you got to be wary. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. I've, I think there, there was one one family when I was teaching that had the camp. They, they pronounced the whole thing wow. like that. And I, of course would say it wrong in the classroom because I wasn't used to it. So <laughs> it does exist. But Matt's with us this evening. And why is Matt with us? You might be asking, well, it's because he's an author and that makes him an expert. And Dan and I are not experts. So, <laughs> uh, Oh boy. But Matt, Matt, I need to get I need to get a shovel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, for those who want to get this out there right away, uh, there's a link in the description of this video tonight uh, to Matt's book. It's out there on Amazon. Uh, it's, it's the Wedding Songs Planner. Uh, it's a guide for picking all the songs for your wedding uh, in minutes. It's a great resource. Dan's got it right behind him, and he's got it. He's, he was studying it actually before we went on air. He was like reading. And Dan's a school teacher, so that means he was probably cramming because he procrastinated. But we're not going to go there. We're going to go and focus on tonight music and specifically opening up that dance floor. Most of us are kind of coming into that wedding world. Matt wrote a book about wedding music. And we want to kind of dig into that a little bit um, with that opening of the dance floor. So, guys, today I was awesome. I, I spent a little time. Uh, I was when I go for my walk, I like to listen to music or something. And today I decided to listen to uh, Mike Walters, "The Keys to Being a, a Great MC or DJ," which you can go to djmikewalter.com and you can find the keys. Um, that is what that series is. And he was talking about how in 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 their business, it's they feel it's so important to basically to open that dance floor with a bang after the the formalities. In their case, sometimes it's after a course, a meal course. In our case, it's you know after the spotlight dances. But they talked about that, opening the dance floor with a bang. And I wanted to kind of get your guys' opinion on that, if that's, if that's something as, as important as what Elite Entertainment is talking about. Matt, since you're a guest, you can go first. Oh, okay. Uh, for me, I, I totally think that it is very important to start it off with a bang. Uh, when I was DJing weddings, I always started off with a banger. And it was one of those things where you, you want to get everybody excited. You want to get everybody dancing. You want to have that start off because if you don't, you, you, you could just have a lull throughout the whole night and then people could leave early. So you want to make sure that you get it started off in the right foot. Dan, your thoughts? It used to be we'd have a kind of a different philosophy, right? We People would have to kind of warm up or, or whatever might happen to be the case. But I, I think what ends up happening is, um, at least the, the weddings that I've seen lately, people tend to get intoxicated a little bit earlier than they used to. And so you, you definitely want to go for that go hard early, like hit them, hit them in the face with it when they're still like aware enough of like having to have that good song. Right. You know, what I mean, like when, when they're intoxicated, they'll dance to anything. But earlier on, like if they're not quite there yet, hitting them with something strong uh, gets them on your side. 
gets them knowing that, hey, you know what? He's, I'm going to hear some good music tonight. And and then later on, by the time they're intoxicated, then you can, you know, go a little weird maybe with your selections or a little bit off off kilter from the original piece. So so when a person's jumping into it and I and, I, and I'm thinking back to uh, the way uh, Mike talked about it in the video, they would do their whatever and they would come. They would start with a slow dance to get the couples out on the floor and then they would go big um, as kind of a phraseology you were using. When we go if we go back 10, 15, 20 years how would you have, what would you have used for kind of a criteria to pick that big first song? What would you have, have thought about or looked at to decide what song would be your opening type song for a big song like that? I was just thinking about that. And I, I, I look to the public and what's popular right now. So I know for me, Rihanna just did the halftime show. Rihanna's on your mind. I would I would definitely have in the first few songs a Rihanna song, you know, "Don't Stop the Music," uh, one one of her main hits. Um, I, I would go there first, and I remember a few years ago there was a commercial where Tag Team was doing uh, "Whoop!" There it is in a commercial, so there, yeah. they were on everybody's mind. So why not throw "Whoop!" There it is in the beginning because that's something that any generation is going to recognize because they're getting it on the TV. So I just, I would first start with pop, with pop culture. Sure. And that would, yeah, we could be, you know, obviously looking, you talked about Super Bowl in commercials. Um, and we've talked about, uh, you know, when movies and in a couple of months, we're going to have uh, guardians of the galaxy, which has been a huge, uh, mm -hmm. had a huge effect. I think of all the movies, thinking about recently when queen came out there was a bump where people were like yeah like can you play some queen but it didn't seem to have the same uh pull or draw or whatever that the guardians of the galaxy did when it came to people requesting songs i've never played elo until right. the guardians right. of the galaxy uh came out and people are singing along to mr blue sky and it's like really it's been a great song for a long time why did you just find it you know oh well if it was in a movie you know it's an awesome song <laughs> yeah no it was good before but <laughs> red bone's always been awesome <laughs> yeah exactly it's just, now that you you know what it is well, and, and and to that note i think you know one of the things that also makes a difference right like not just necessarily pop culture but also looking at the pop culture aspect from an un unaware audience i guess mm -hmm. is maybe the way to, to word it so for example you know when you reference the queen movie or the elton john movie and stuff like that typically the people who went to see them were either a people who appreciated music in general or people who wanted to know more about Queen or fans of Queen, right? So you were seeing that bump or kind of that resurgent because people may have kind of forgotten about them and they kind of come back to the forefront, but it wasn't a mass appeal. Mm -hmm. When you get something like Guardians of the Galaxy or you get a you get a movie that is not targeting fans of this genre of music, but rather a wide appeal of audience, and now they get kind of this music in their face that either they forgot about, never heard, and or whatever. But it had a nice type of good feel good piece to it. It has a more mass appeal. So I think when you are looking for those those songs that you want to use, it's important to also kind of grab it where there are going to hear something um, that's going to be in that all audience. Like Rihanna again, halftime. They keep in mind you don't have to go far on social media to see how how divided. You know, you, you get like people who absolutely <laughs> loved it to people who absolutely hated it and, and very little in the middle. But but there again, it was on a stage that was appealing to a wide variety of people that could see it. So, you, again, you could pull those in in that fashion pretty easily. How do you think age plays into it when you're looking out in that into that crowd? We're going to not say dance floor quite yet because the people maybe haven't gotten to dance floor before we make that decision on what our first banger is going to be. How do you think age plays into it with today's audiences? It plays a huge role for me. You know, I, I it's something that I have always been saying that, you know, you look at the high school age, but I, I've even been uh, uh, reminded even by, by talkers like Dave Lander who said, okay, here's uh, the most influential music is when you're in middle school. And I always thought it was high school. So somewhere between middle, middle school and high school. And then you think of, okay, how old are the bride and groom? How old are, are the wedding couple? How old is, are their parents? And then you kind of can get an eight, 
get an idea of what eras you should be going after. Whereas, you know, the, the 40 or the swing music of the, of the 40s and the, and the 50s, well, maybe they can't relate to that because the bride and groom are 19, their parents could be 40, and even the great-grandparents are going to be 60. Okay, that that's still 1980s. You know, you probably don't want to go back that far when you're just starting it off. Maybe maybe you want to bump up to a little bit more current music than than the 50s. So for me, I'm I'm always considering age. And and that's a, a good point with the 50s because I was looking back at our notes when we first started in the in the 90s uh, when we were really uh, doing multi-system DJ. And that first set I mean, we we literally would script the first hour with some variation, but that was kind of what we, you would do, uh, hitting some oldies in that first, and then you would hit some country, and you would hit, and it was it was programmed kind of for the central Minnesota area, but it was it was consistent. And at that time, again, we're back we're back to the '90s, so that's thirty, you know, thirty years ago. Um, mm-hmm. That was a different time because that would have made that those songs at that time in the '90s were roughly about forty years old. So you had that was a. a older parent younger grandparent the age and that's a great point matt that some of those songs from that era those those folks are gone and unless it's been used or or it's such a big song like uh um uh, elite they mentioned uh, rock and robin today as as a song that they mm. use not as an opening song but they use it in the, some sets you know those songs are going to be gone and the generation and the generation's children who might have heard that you know that's just kind of going to drift away i think and that's why I think it's important. Like you were, it's so funny you mentioned Queen and Elton John. Well, they just redid Aretha Franklin with, um, oh God, I can't think of her name, but but she just did that. So that might bring back respect where you can play that because that movie came out. Now it makes it relevant again. So, it, but you know, you just have to be really uh, conscious of of the ages. Dan, how does that play into your role? So, so I do something similar kind of with the ages, but I, I rather, rather than going and looking at, um, the couple and just kind of looking at what was necessarily something that was a strong song from, from that middle school, high school, I take it one step further. And and I think also, what am I getting that mass appeal? What am I going to get the parents comfortable on the floor with? What am I going to get? And so I'm willing to go a little bit older not with it, not going like way back to the, you know to as far as like going to 40 years ago at the 80s but i'm i'm willing to to dip back a little bit to find something that's going to be a strong enough song for that for that current group but yet get those parents on the floor at the same time because i know i'm going to get the new ones to stick around i know i'm going to get the to get the younger crowd to stick around and and to, to kind of hang on unless they're a new parent they're you know they're going to be there to party and enjoy themselves but the parents and and their friends and that are going to be gone so i it's not that i'm i'm programming to them but i want to make sure that they get the hook early so that they're not trying to to leave even earlier to know that oh you know because if i go too new the instant the instant thought from the parents and and their friends is well all all we're going to hear is is new stuff you know, all we're, we're going to hear is, you know, in, insert whatever complaint you could have, you know, with that. But when I get something that that might appeal to them in both both pieces and, and I'll use this, for example, I don't usually use this early, early, but something I'll use probably within the first half an hour is flow right low. That that has such a wide appeal for a song that, you know, for our, for our couples is probably middle school. Right, middle school, maybe late elementary, depending upon the age that you're dealing with. But yet, grandma's out there dancing like it's the hottest song ever, and <laughs> so it's one of those songs that you can get with both peeps, both groups of people, pretty quickly and pretty easily. I think that's uh, the, kind of circling back. You know, when you're talking playing flow right in that first half hour to hour, I think that's a, one of the big changes from those early years of our our. We wouldn't have played, you know, one of the big big. We used to categorize songs by a b c and d a was a must play banger that was going to work everywhere you know we didn't use the phrase banger that was something jason jan i brought to the world um but it was one of those it was those must play because it was going to be a a a dance floor uh filler b would be you know good but not quite maybe to the level and then c and d that concept um 
we 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 had that and and such and those A songs you'd maybe get one in that first hour but my, mainly you were talking between B and C level songs in that first hour just because of the crowd not being warmed up yet or for, for whatever reason they they didn't jump on the floor and then you'd play that those A in those last two hours because you wanted to be, have people you know hooting and hollering because that's the you know the more fun they had at the end and the more they remembered how much fun they had the more referrals it would make that type of a mentality. <laughs> And that does, doesn't work, or, or doesn't, it isn't the same, I guess, for us as it had been with that. So hearing that you play that in that first half hour doesn't surprise me whatsoever. Doesn't surprise me. That, that's just the way it is. I will say one of the things to, to kind of consider that we didn't, we didn't talk about, I don't know if maybe, John, this was on your, on your plan for later, but I, I, I have found that there are certain circumstances which will put me back into that old school mentality of I'm going to warm them up for a little bit before I throw anything at them and and where that happens is when I'm is my summer weddings when it's also a little bit on the warmer side right mm -hmm. because the last thing that they want to do is come out on this dance floor and try and start to dance when they're like still sweating like crazy and so if you throw something at them thinking that they're going to you're going to bring them on the floor, all you're going to do is burn a song that that they're not coming out for. Like if it if it's if it's in that hot situation or the summer where it's, you know, a lot of bright sunlight, everything else, or they're they're hanging out outside because there's cornhole or whatever within, you know, stones throw from from the doors. Um, it's just it works against. So I think sometimes there are exceptions kind of to this plan of, of going hard early. And that is, you know, what are the environmental type conditions that are, are going to play havoc with you? And very that's it. Point. Yeah, very good. Very good point. And I've, I've had a couple of situations where we were going to be under a tent outdoors and we had the conversation. And this is, you know, tip for those of you who are doing this and have never or maybe are going to be do, getting it. You're going to have to have that conversation because the bride, you know, the dance starts at eight o'clock and we expect, you know, we want people to be dancing at eight o'clock. Hey, I can't compete with a beautiful evening. And, and you know, the, there are there aren't any bugs out and there's no wind and it's just a nice, beautiful sunset. I can't compete with that. I want to be out there. I don't want to be sitting under the right. tent. So <laughs> it's a re, the real, you know, that we probably the dance is really not going to start at eight o'clock. We might be playing some more upbeat music, but now we're going to play some of those going back to we're gonna play some of those B songs, more the the, the toe tapping stuff, and the the big dance songs are probably gonna be starting at you know at or a little after dusk somewhere in there, depending upon how things are are planning. And it sometimes it's not that way, but many times outside, as Dan said, it is, and you just can't fight Mother Nature. Okay, so so age plays a little bit into it as we look at that. Um, pop culture definitely will will will. Uh, play a little bit how often though do you just when you were when you, matt when you were djing how often would you just basically you know this is my opening song and it just seems to work all the time was did that was that or is it one of those things you walked into and said i don't know what i'm going to play as my first song i'm going to make that decision five minutes before you know that, that song is played how did you handle it one, one of the things i was thinking about that i i haven't mentioned yet and i just thought of this just now is I think that it's really important to have the cocktail hour and, and dinner hour be your layout of what you're going to do, how people are reacting to your music. So if you're playing uh, Backstreet Boys, I want it that way during dinner or sing uh, whatever sing along song during cocktail hour and they're not doing anything, I think that's really going to affect the way that I start the dance floor where I know if they are in party mode, they're, they're ready. They're here to party. You know, they're already seems like they're dancing on the tables before I even get started yep. kind of mode. Okay. And then, yeah, that's going to change in what I, what I play. You know, if I notice that the, the crowd is older, the, 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 the wedding couple's older, then yeah, I might start off with a slow song. So I, I just want to try to get that vibe from what's happening during dinner and what's happening during uh, the cocktail hour too. And, and let's, let's dig into that a little bit and we'll come back to the, the, uh, the, the, how, when we pick the song, um, when, before we went on air, Matt, you mentioned that you were at a wedding where basically they were playing, you know, the instrumental music in the background for a couple of hours before the uh, dance was supposed to start. And you had made comment to how uninspiring 
for lack of a yes. better way to describe <laughs> that is. And and for those who are are you know kind of thinking they could in, back in our day throw a CD in and walk away type of thing during that cocktail mm-hmm. time. Um, how has that changed from the back at that when we used to you know have the Kenny G CD throw it in there and say woohoo we got dinner covered. You know how are especially as you're working through these songs that that couples are using, and and how that has evolved over the years, is the dinner as or the dinner and cocktail, is it as important as I I kind of been feeling it is these days compared to what it used to be? It's extremely important. You know I'm I'm in a, a couple of the Facebook groups for couples planning their weddings, and a lot of brides are in there saying they want a party feel, they want people to have a good time. And if you, if your idea of having a good time, that's where our expertise as DJs have to go to the wedding couples and say, okay, I understand you're a classical pianist, but do you really want to hear John Coltrane? Do you really want to hear Kenny G or, you know, whoever during, during the cocktail hour, what kind of mood are you going to set? Are you setting that? that uh that fun vibe like like what like i was saying two hours of instrumental music even i was bored after two hours i wanted to leave before the dancing and i wasn't even the you know i wasn't even dj and i was there as as a as a friend of the to the bride so and I, it's it's extremely important to to set that feel for the dancing because you know like dan was saying they have to be ready to they 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 want to party at right right when it's time to party and you have to set that tone i think though when when we talk about when we talk about dinner when we talk about when we talk about cocktails what i've run into a lot with my couples is they don't view it as as important hmm Right. Mm-hmm. Like their eyes are on the dance floor. Like their eyes are, mm-hmm. I want to get through all these festive things that I have to do so that we can have a party. And that's all that they focus on. However, I would say that exactly cocktail and dinner has become way more important, at least to me and, and to and to I think our industry than it used to at least be viewed as. Now, whether that's been fortunate, you know, fortunately with some leaders who have kind of got us to rethink or whether because we're starting to recognize that we can't do that lead in coming out of dinner and ramp them up and get that energy going now, then we do that priming of the pump during cocktail. We prime the pump during dinner with different styles. Oh my God. Like it's, it's interesting to see the night and day when I have a couple who is very insistent on their cocktail and dinner music selections Mm -hmm. and it just zaps the energy out of the room. Mm-hmm. versus the ones that go we want to style and they let me play okay because when that happens when they talk about style then i can play and go okay well you want this well i can kind of let's let's skirt that line a little bit to get that mm-hmm. energy in there a little bit more um and, and just kind of build that so that it's just a natural again i tell my couple i'm like listen i don't want you dancing I don't want them dancing during dinner. That kind of could create a problem. I said for your for your staff, for your venue staff. I said, but I want to get them as close as we can. You know, I, by the end of dinner, I want it to just feel like it's a natural progression for them to get out of their seat and either hit the dance floor or hit the bar and dead the dance floor. Mm-hmm. Like it should be boom, one of those two. And and when I get that, it's been completely different. So again, I don't think the couples are necessarily seeing it. Maybe some are, but mine have it. But I have I have noticed that it's become more important for my events. So programming, cocktail dinner, good thing for those of you out there watching and, and taking notes. Uh, Dan, let's 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 jump back to the. Uh, do you, you for that opening fast song? You've you've played the slow song to get the crowd out there. You've got that dance floor ready. You're ready to go with them. Do you have that song figured out in advance most of the time, or is it one of those things that you are have picked it out because of uh, what you've seen up to that point? For the longest time, I always had the same three song set that I would start off with. And it would be Michael Jackson, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, into KC and Sunshine Band, Boogie Shoes, into, um, and then I would slam down into uh, Run Around Sue. So I would kind of get that, kind of get that vibe for that Michael Jackson and Crab, got the older crowd with the Boogie Shoes. Um, and then when I would slam down to Run, or, uh, run around Sue. It was again one of those. It was an older one, but it was kind of. It had that kind of cool little vibe to it. Um, a couple years ago, though, 
I started to challenge myself because there were there was DJs, different DJs who were talking about their crates and, and their folders and they would you know, suggest about, you know, they would have a, a folder of opening songs of, of floor starters, if you will. Mm-hmm. And I I took that idea. I, I, I got some of the list, but I also then added my own. And I've now made it a point where I try not to do the same song starting. You know, typically maybe I might have that 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 song that I wanted to use, like a, a Whitney Houston or something like that. that I know is going to appeal to all. That might be within that first few. But the song that I start with, I try to change up just so that I don't get stagnant. And I also it causes me to do exactly as as Matt was saying, pay more attention during cocktails and dinners to what to what made them move, mm-hmm. what what made them bounce their head, what made them you know, kind of have a little extra step, maybe even kind of did a sachet as they were going across the floor in between something, at, you know, during cocktail or dinner, something like that, by forcing myself to pick a different song, it forced me to also pay more attention at times where I used to kind of, eh, music's playing, I'm just kind of chilling here for a bit. Sure. What about you, John? Um, you mentioned that the the same three songs, and it's like, yeah, that's how that's how we taught it uh, when we again when we had the multi system in the the mid '90s through early 2000s, is the very slow song, whatever it was um, that we came out of, and that would be probably Elvis. And it was ironic listening to uh, the elite uh, the elite thing; they were coming out with an, Elvis can't help falling in love numerous times when they were going into that, and it would go into an oldies set, the '50s. Uh, my 50 set so it would be a uh, rock around the clock uh, jailhouse rock and then either yakety yak or barbara ann and if they were really going well it would be one and then the other and then getting into country then segue into 80s and then kind of bounce around for that first half hour those those three songs of 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 um uh jailhouse rock uh, excuse me rock around the clock and jailhouse rock were the first two songs that we all played it was just like mm-hmm. clockwork but we're talking 30 years ago when those songs would have been more towards the, the crowd that grew up with them were there. So they would know it and their kids would know it. It was the, the little cover bands in our area. They all played pretty much most of those songs at, at some point in time. So they were well known and, and uh, such. Today, I, I wouldn't do that. Um, I, I generally go in and I've a similar, uh, Dan, and that idea of having like three or four songs that I know are, are solid in that first position. And I go in there and it's like, okay, so tonight I'm going to try to do something a little bit different. And I might even have both of the songs in the side list. I've gotten it down to two. And then there's that one that I always have mainly have started with. And somehow, invariably, 80% of the time, it's probably the same song. And I won't even be, I can't even tell you right off the top of my head what it is right now. Uh, just because, but I bet you as soon as I'd start getting ready with the wet and they would do that slow dance and it'd be like, oh yeah, I'm grabbing celebration once again, type of thing or whatever this song, this song is, um, it's just, just how it's, it it just felt. And part of that is because uh, the way I set up with the latter part of the cocktails, I'm coming to coming out of that with many things from that seventies and eighties era, which we're now seeing crowds moving and dancing and they know some of these songs and then you can come out with something that will uh, kind of fit in that um, in that genre uh, play as I come out of the, the slow dance. So it'd be nice to have more variety, but sometimes when you got something that that se- that works with a wide wide age group, you you kind of ride that uh, that pony. So let me ask you then, going off of that, I, I love uh, the term mass appeal that Dan used. So why not? Why why do you have to wait? to play like uh, mass appeal like party in the usa or timber by pitbull or you know just some uh, song why save those because there's so many great songs out there just p- bring in those mass appeal songs earlier in the evening is that and that's a that's a great question and that's i i think it's a and maybe it's it's just a personal thing that i don't want to go and and those aren't really super new songs but yet for a 50 year old uh, parent, those might be getting to the to the edge of, of new at that t- or being too new at that time, and that there would be something that would be a little bit uh, a little bit older. I was I was thinking about it. It's like somebody I saw had talked about this, and they mentioned that they use Uptown Funk as one of their their first songs, um, 
I, I, another early one is Don't Stop the Party uh, that, mm-hmm. that has, that's used. And there's some, some great stuff like that. And I, I, that inner turmoil is, is I don't want to mm-hmm. be too new. And uh, granted, again, these aren't super new songs. These are 15, 10 to 15 year old songs type of thing. Mm-hmm. Is it, I want the, the, a little bit older and I, I, it's this balancing act. And, and then all of a sudden I start second guessing myself really quick. And then the next thing you know, you're going back to the old, you know, the old, old reliables. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's just you know like this is a safe choice so you're you're back there and then you, you, we're setting up the song footloose in that first set and it's like i didn't want to play that but it fits here now because i just set it up this way and i don't know why but i did oh well we you just on. always set it up yeah i think one of the things that's that's important if you're looking for a, an opportunity to figure out a way to pull that mass appeal song in earlier pay attention to those songs that you know there's mass appeal songs when you play them later on do you get really legitimately everybody on the dance floor or did they just stay on the dance floor, right? Do you, do you see more people coming to the dance floor than what was on there already? And if you do, then that's definitely a song that you can say, you know what? I'm, I can, I can bump that up in the night. I can, I can probably get away with that earlier than I originally planned for it. Um, and, and you, and again, it's not that you don't want to, have those bumps later on in the night as well, because you've got to realize you do have to ebb and flow your dance floor in some form. You got to, you know, rotation. Yeah. It's not a bar rotation, but it's still a rotation to keep them having energy. Right. And sure. and so, you know, that, that bump is going to happen, but recognizing when that happens with whatever the song may be, it is, it does open the door for you to bring that in earlier than you may have. One of the things that for me, so why I wouldn't, and I'm just going to use party in the USA as, as an example that you had there. I like to typically start something that is in anywhere from the 115 to about 128 range BPM, more probably in the 118 to 128, just for, I feel it opens the door for a lot of energy in the right direction. There's older, newer, you can, you really have a wide area that you can go. I think some of the early or the low 100s has more of that early 2000s type of feel. Mm-hmm. There's some that are intermixed, but you don't have as much older that you can go with that. And obviously, the slower the BPM, the the less older songs really are options that, that you can go to. So I just like having that upper piece because it really just opens up what I can do and where I can go if they respond or if they don't. I can quick mix in, out, wherever I want to go to get them and, and to start grabbing for them. So you now you're talking beat per minute, and then that gets into the whole some some. Uh, and I don't know, Dan, if you've talked about the uh, the whole philosophy of why some songs work at certain times is because it is a comfortable uh, it's a comfortable heart rate for people who are out there on the dance floor, and you put it all. And there's a science that people have been talking about. Um, you just you know you get really. You. Uh, you and I haven't talked about that on the show, but that is that is something that I believe 100 percent is is that there is there is a huge science and math angle, which is probably why I geek out on it and remember PPMs for stupid reasons. Yeah, you kind of um, do. Not, yeah. yeah, I yeah. do. Like, like I, I'm not a savant on it, but there's it's very few that you go, oh, that's the song you play. What's the BPM? And I don't know it like it just I haven't even with software having it memorized for me. Um, but it, it, it does. It just it. Having that ability to create that energy, yes, I know there's an energy in a, in a song that's not relied upon the BPM, but I also know that the BPM does play a big factor into that. And again, when they have more energy, when you haven't tired them out, and when they haven't become intoxicated to the point that they can't dance to something fast, it's a good idea to be able to use that. So mm-hmm. another reason for maybe being on that faster BPM earlier. So, yeah, so go ahead, Matt. Go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I was just uh, going to say, they're, they're not dancing to trouble by uh, Travis Tritt at, at <laughs> when they're all wasted. <laughs> <laughs> not so much. It's a little fast, a little fast there. So, so just to kind of put a, a little footnote in the, the heart rate and the BPM thing is that as a 50 something year old, uh, your maximum heart rate is supposed to be about 170, and a comfortable is about 60% of your your max heart rate. So that puts you in that you know that 120, 110, 10, 105. So 
when Dan's talking about starting out with a 118 to fit into that theory of, of hitting that, you're hitting the kind of the almost maximum area for your, your late fifties and early 60 year olds at that 118, that 115 to 118 heart rate. So if you're going to talk about the medical side of why you choose the song you choose, there you are. That's fascinating. I didn't, I have not heard that before. Yeah. And this where it really started to, to come out and then we'll move on, but is the whole idea behind, uh, AI being able to, from a distance, be able to pick up your heart rate now, um, that it can be read by sensors in the room, not even, not even on my watch. It can be a distant sensor and how the next generation of AI, when it comes to creating that artificial intelligence, doing DJ work, will be able to look at who's in the room, see faces, see reactions, and also take body temperature and heart rate um, mm -hmm. at a moment's notice, and then work the music and work things from there. It's crazy, wow. crazy how that's all what they're talking about with that. So, Guys, you got about somewhere 15, 20 minutes left, and people are starting to throw songs into the chat room there. Um, I think I think let's we should actually. I was thinking, you know, that talking about that one certain song, but I kind of like uh, like Matt. You mentioned a couple of the songs that you you know throw these songs out early, and maybe that might be more effective. Is to talk talk about some of those songs in certain situations uh, that these would be you know the starter songs that might be in the first three song type set, because I think that sometimes it's it's where it's important that first song and you want that hook. But sometimes maybe that hook isn't exactly, it was maybe a setup for the next one uh, type of a situation that you play it. And, you know, as MJ has talked about, is every song he's got, he's got, a, he's got an end point and he's got multiple out points. In case it doesn't work, he can get out of it immediately type of a situation. Sure. And I think that that can be real. <laughs> well, I, absolutely you got to have those uh those uh great songs so you know one of my favorites september by earth wind and fire it's the you know i'm going to say it again mass appeal to multiple generations that everybody will recognize even though it's a little bit older and then uh you know i know everybody says uptown funk but 24k magic i don't know about you guys that one i'm i'm kind of even making that surpass uptown funk just because uptown funk's been played so much that i'm starting to hear a lot more djs play 24k magic over uptown funk and i'm actually i've seen that and i didn't check the the um, dj van planner top 200 by the way dj van planner is one of our big sponsors here at uh, dj and tv uh links for all of our sponsors are down in the description of the video also um i don't i don't remember where those two fell on that list but for my my personal request, I've had more for 24K Magic than I have Uptown Funk in advance from Brides. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's definitely a uh, a desire for Bruno. It's just a question of, is that one overplayed? And they went this direction because of that. Right. Talk about Bruno. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. We won't. Uh. That, yeah, that's for all the parents out there of the of the younger children. Yeah, that sounds get it. stayed in the top. Go back and turn up the volume. It stayed um, in the the top uh, the top of the charts for how long? Like forever? Oh my gosh, that was in the charts for a long time. Well, I can tell you the most streamed song right now. It set the record on Spotify as "Flowers" by Miley Cyrus. She set the weekly stream record. Yeah, I could I'll be checking that, but yeah, she that that just went right to the right to the top. Unfortunately, I don't think it's a song that we could we could do at no. a wedding. Oh, I'm totally mm. dropping it this this spring. I, yeah. I, I my plan is if it's still hanging, if it's still hanging, it's going to be there, and it's going to be it's going to be very similar to the uh, Beyonce single ladies type mm. of thing, where you're going to get the girls that are going to be the the bridesmaids or whatever, and they're it's going to be like their calling card for this year. I really I really believe the only thing that I think that could hurt it is the fact that it caught on so fast, so early, at an off peak time of our year. You know, I think had this song come out in May, I, I easily think it could be worked in all summer long, easily probably into the fall. So I may be wrong. But. In in the chat room, guys, there's been a, a number of songs mentioned, and one that has been mentioned a couple of times is Blurred Lines. 
Mm. And that's that's interesting to me because, you know, when it first came out, it was everywhere. Our local TV station was at the State Fair, and it was their bumper music getting into uh, the different news segments. They had the uh, little instrumental part of it. And there was all this stuff going on. You know, first off, the song is, you know, whatever they, they called it, a date rape song or whatever. They were referring to it as after the fact down the road. And there was some controversy with, with, um, with Robin Thicke. And yet it's, it's, it's come... You know, Eric and Eric mentions it here. Somebody mentioned it up above, and and I've seen it uh, hitting my requests. Um, have you guys heard? Is it is it making a comeback? And I'm not aware of it, or did it just never go away? I think it's it, very similar to the Uptown Funk. It's one that it kind of has that feel for all ages, right? It you know, Uptown Funk had that had that funky by its name it, it, as well as its feel had that you know mass appeal because you had the new generation who liked it because it was new music but you also had the older generation who was like oh this kind of fits in the music that i'm used to yeah same type of thing with blurred lines and but i think both of them got burnt out it's funny you talk about hearing it so much i still remember the year we went to we went to dj expo yep. and it was like walking from one end of the casino to the other five times you heard it like yep. it was because you got to different areas um but but no it, it's it's one of those things where i think you know it's gone away for so long that it's that now it's coming back and and where i'm getting the request if i'm getting it is from some of that older crowd hmm. who at the time that it came out may have been on the upper end of the age where it would have been like okay and i'm not talking like the the middle age high school but i'm talking like you know they at the time that they came out they were probably in their 30s ish um, and so now they're now it's like, okay, well, it's I, I want to find something that's kind of new, but it's something that I can deal with. And I haven't heard it all the time. Oh, let me go do blurred lines. And I think that's why you're getting things like that, that are coming back into the picture. I think they did go away and they definitely went away for me. But I think that they went away and are coming back because it's been long enough, but they liked it enough that they can be safe to request it. Sure. Yeah, and, and and it is it, the hook. It's a campy little song. It's just kind of a fun little thing. If as long as you're not paying attention to the lyrics, you, it's a great tune. <laughs> you know, so is Gold Digger. I mean, if you don't pay attention to the lyrics, I mean, <laughs> there is that. Um, okay, so so Matt, you mentioned September, and that that you know one of these songs that that's a one in my my uh, repertoire of celebration is one that's that's kind of a common early on. Um, oh, there was one more than that. Oh. The the uh, uh, Lionel Richie Commodores they do my girl no 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 they did a, a oh a brick house brick house thank you yeah that is one I have when I've heard over the years DJs talk about they open their dance floor brick house is always comes up in discussions and I haven't seen it tonight in the chat room uh, from from folks um. I've never had a success with Brick House, and I don't know if that's just a regional thing or if if uh, I, I don't I don't know. I just I've never done well with Brick House, and yet for some people it must work. Yeah, I DJ to Montana, and uh, I didn't get too many requests for Brick House either, and didn't have great success with it. So, but maybe times have changed. I'm not sure. I've never had success with it. Even when I've had the request for it, like, and I play it, I get a small set that comes out and, and, and goes for it, but it's never been one that's been like, Oh yeah, I definitely need to start bringing that back into the play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thoughts about going for a group song right away as cause some people have talked about that, not in the chat room tonight, but I have heard people talk about that. They want to open the dance floor with, the at the time cha cha slide was you know kind of kind of the hot thing but it may be now it's the cupid shuffle or something to that effect what are your thoughts when it comes to trying to open a dance floor with a group song like that for, for me i'm i'm not a huge fan of that because i want to get a feel of what people are going to dance to uh for me i would rather see a ladies anthem over a over a uh a, a group dance. Give me a, give me you an know. example of a ladies anthem. What's your because? Uh, man, I feel even though I guess that's kind of a group dance. Man, I feel like a woman, or even uh, you know, single ladies or uh, wannabe. 
you know, just because I know that wherever the ladies are, the guys are going to follow. Very so, true. Um, I, I, me personally, I'd rather start that way than to start with the group dance. Um, but it's going to depend on the, the, the wedding couple as well, because, you know, in the mid, we have family in Wisconsin where they are hugely fond of the chicken dance where, okay, maybe if I want to ha- get all the kids out on the dance floor and I know the wedding couple wants it. Yeah. Then I'm going to play that. Uh, I- I'm not going to save that till the end of the night. I want to get that out of the way. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Especially if the kids are, are involved with it. Yep. You mentioned uh, da, 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 song. Um, oh, Shania Twain. That was an yes. interesting track. Uh, great tune. That's always been, since it came out, it's been in that early, that first half hour set. And it's still uh, is one of those early go-to songs. The interesting thing is that the num- it's still being requested. And it it actually went up from last year's charts to, in this year's charts, it's a little bit higher. Uh, I think it mm-hmm. went up a place or two. So it's either, I think it's like number two or whatever of that, that era. So there's... That that female anthem, you're definitely hitting the nail on the head there. That that is a very popular, um, very popular thing for the dance floor. Having something that pulls pulls them onto the floor is, is definitely is definitely a better bet. I mean, it, it just when I've watched my dance floors, guy, whether I start with the ladies' anthem or whether I start with something that could appeal to all ages, the guys are just a little slower to come out you've got usually have you know mm-hmm. two or three guys that you go oh okay they're my dancers right they're gonna they're gonna be out there all night long have a great time but in a general group it's it takes a little bit for for the guys in general and, and stereotyping and, and kind of generalities but that tends to be the case um i i'll be out when you're talking about the 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 group dances for me, there's there's two reasons. If I had a couple that was that was big into line dances and group dances, I would say, yeah, let's all slam one to start because if they if they put it a point to say we love line dances, there's so many out there. I want to make sure that I'm definitely going to start out strong for. It. Beyond that, I'll be honest with you, like any other couple, I in some ways I feel like I don't have the guts because if that flops, right. it flops hard. <laughs> You know what Good I mean? Point, like if, right. if I throw a if I throw a line dance out there and nobody comes to the floor, yeah, I really look like a doofus. <laughs> but if I throw out something else, right? I throw any other song out there that doesn't talk like or that doesn't have a line dance that you are supposed to do to it, then it just looks like I'm playing a song and well, I didn't really get much response and I can go into the next one and it looks like I just mixed into the next one. But if I mix out of a line dance, it's going to be pretty obvious because nobody was on the floor. <laughs> so that's, I think you know, that's a big risk versus reward type of situation. Um, but I also think, it, you know, we, I know we're talking a lot weddings tonight, but it, you know, if we switch the idea to school dances, I think that's a slight difference. Now I don't, yeah. I'm not saying the first song that I play for a dance is, is a line dance, but there's a the mentality out there of, you know, doing some of that warm up for like 10, 15 minutes as people are basically coming in the door and then slamming them with a line dance. And for that, for a school dance, that holds them all to yep. the floor. Completely different type of mentality than wedding. But you can see the difference where they might belong different too. And I think, I think the only part that would really be the big difference is that, that warm up, uh, that 10 minute warm up thing. And in a, at a wedding, we've got two hours of cocktail. That there's our warm up, really, uh, as we've been talking about it. Is that you know building that energy and and watching the crowd and uh, somebody I think, go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry. yep. I, I, I it's so funny because I used to DJ. Um, you know, half of my DJing was weddings, the other half was schools. And uh, when it, it's so funny that we were talking about, okay, what people liked in school, you know, if, if you DJ at schools, then you knew, okay, this is the music they liked when you were still DJing, you know, 15 years later, these are the kids that are getting married. <laughs> so it's funny, you know, I, I remember that the, I used to do a, a middle school and the song that was always the best song was Lynn Steal My Sunshine mm-hmm. from the middle school because they always all danced. And now it's kind of funny where, okay, these are the couples that are getting married i need to play this because it was so popular there's a flashback for us <laughs> uh, that and, um so somebody mentioned a song uh, uh dj rt's uh, hey baby up uh, up above and that's another spot again dj mike the keys uh, video they talk about songs such as that and and how early in the night that they do a lot of 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 uh, prompting 
with songs. And I think if you've never done prompting or posting of a song, spend the money to buy that that video with, from Mike because that alone is going to set you apart. If you, no one does it in your market is, is doing that kind of stuff, not that you do it often, but when you do it, you just have, you have to do it really, really well. And it's gold. It is literally gold to be able to do that because you can you can have uh, next week's uh, Tuesday video. I'm going to talk actually talk more about that. You guys will be able to catch that, but it, it's gold. Uh, no question about that. Uh, let's see where are we at. So so any let's let's Dan, what you got a couple more songs in that folder of yours. Let's talk about those songs so we can critique them and tell you how bad they are. Go because they're not. If they would be from this band, they would be awesome. But I know better that you don't have that kind of quality taste. Yeah. And day, day, uh, day and night mentioned that that the best hour of the dance is that one hour you play the Huey Lewis sports album. Day knows what's going on. Gonna say it. <laughs> Gonna say it. Long enough for an hour? Just please don't tell me you played on repeat day. <sighs> um, so, <laughs> so with the song, so one of the songs that I that I use that I have in that that floor starter floor starter piece. Now it also kind of hits in different spots. So. Um, part of what's in there is, is the idea of, of starting the floor for the night. And then uh, the other aspect is starting the floor coming out of some other element later in the night, whether it be a slow song or, but you know, basically where you, you ramp that floor back up. Um, but, but a uh, Whitney Houston, I want to dance with somebody who loves me partly because that if, if you don't have a redrum, that intro is killer for trying to do anything else to start that song. Cause it's just got that the way, the way that it does. Um, walk them, uh, yeah, walk the moon, shut up and dance. Another one that, that fits in and again, another one that's on that newer end mm -hmm. to, to a lot of our audience, but yet we'll get, you know, that group young to old out there and, and coming out for that song. Um, and again, you'll notice that both of those 118, 128. So again, in that, in that upper piece, um, I don't like to necessarily start with Earth, Wind, and Fire September, but that is, I do have a version in there, again, as another way, because in, in using Mike's technique of posting, it's got that kind of that long intro, and if you're if you're starting your floor coming out of a spotlight or something else, it gives them an answer, an opportunity to hear the song and come from where they are to the dance floor for it. So again, another reason to kind of turn um, before the dance actually kicks in, and then you're like, oh, you should be on the floor now. Um, and then I've done a couple other ones that I, that are in the folder, but I'll be honest, I've never used them in this aspect. What, but is um, Bob Seger old time rock and roll? Sure. N mainly because I feel like I've almost gone a little too old to start a floor with that, right? Even even though it's seventy eight and the Whitney Houston songs in the eighties, I, I you know I don't think it's you know they're not that far apart, but yet I think just the the perception. The, Thank you. Yeah. Of, of where they are is different. So sure. th those are those are some of those in there. And without pulling up the computer and, and looking at the full list, I at least gives you an idea. Matt, do you have any that yep. uh, kind of jump out jump out at you that were songs that you would use or things you've seen that yep. you think would fit into that uh, that area? I, I want to get a little bit unique. I'm going to say uh, December 1963 was one of the ones to get it started because yeah. it had uh, the the older and the newer vibe to it. Uh, a little bit newer, maybe. Um, it, it really just depends on the crowd and reading the crowd. Maybe like a little bit newer, Dynamite by Teo Cruz. Or, um, like I said, there's so many great Pitbull songs. So Timber, I mean, you could play most of his catalog <laughs> to, <laughs> to start. So, um, But yeah, I would start with Timber. And and as, as you mentioned, and Eric uh, just posted about the same time you said it it really depends on the audience is is that if all of a sudden i find i'm, I'm in a you know my son just did uh, he did a wedding and they most of the people were under 30 years old and that's going to give you a different flavor than if i'm doing a a, a second marriage for a couple who are in their 50s if i'm in that area i'm going to be doing something completely different Although, you know, pretty much I, I am set in my ways. I do not flex. So everyone's hearing I Want a New Drug as the first song of the dance. And if they don't like it, eh, that's their problem. <laughs> my, my crowd's here in a journey. journey. <laughs> <laughs> here in journey, no matter what, it's here. 
Uh, all right. Uh, coming up next, we've got Hanging with Howie uh, in the chill room, djntv.com slash chill. You guys can bounce out there and check out uh, tonight's tonight's topic. Howie is back, I believe, to tonight. I think I've seen him in the chat room here um, as things have been going. It's been a busy, busy chat room tonight. So uh, jump out there. Uh, tomorrow night, we will be doing a Tuesday night with Ben Stowe. Ben Stowe is going to be, we're doing our spring season of Tuesday night with Ben Stowe. So he will be with us pretty much every Tuesday between now and Memorial. Uh, Memorial Day and uh, t- tomorrow night Dan and Ben are going to be uh, manning the fort and they're going to be talking about oh yes it's Valentine's Day the day of love so that means that there's got to be gifts for their the DJ in their lives and that, that's what the guys are going to be talking about tomorrow night that'll be at 9 o'clock Eastern and then uh, 10 o'clock Eastern we'll be back in the chill room with the Tuesday night music show with uh, Jay, Brian and Howie uh, having some fun with that so I think we're good. Wednesday night will be, uh, the, for those of you who catch the restreams, uh, Wednesday night we'll do a, a restream of Howie's show, or the restream of Howie's show and the stream of the Tuesday Night Music show, but those will be going up Wednesday at 9 and 10 o'clock um, at, their, at the Eastern time. So, Matt, thanks for being with us tonight. Hey. Thanks, John. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, it was great Absolutely. having you on. And again, his book, uh, the Wedding Song Pl- Wedding Songs Planner, it is right there, and it's the top link in the description of this video. You can go down there, go out there. There's a hardcover version, paperback version. Uh, you can check that out and have that as a resource because that's the 2023 edition that it just came out here not too long ago. So definitely something to check out. I think I have it in my cart. I was just thinking about it. It's like, I thought I had ordered it, but no, I just looked at my cart and it's sitting there. Um, Dan talked about it two weeks ago and it's been sitting there ever since. I guess it shows you how, how often I uh, shop on Amazon on this account. <laughs> All right, Dan, take us home. Thank you so much for taking your time to join us tonight. Uh, especially again, thanks to Matt for, for being able to join us. Those of you there in the chat, you guys make this show as well. Um, the, the choices you gave, I got some new ideas. I might be adding to my folder, I think, be, before it's all said and done. Have yourself a great one. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Uh-huh.